Hello everybody. Under management of dental trauma, we'll be discussing crown and root fractures in this lecture. I'm really happy with the feedback that I've received that you've liked the previous lectures. I hope you enjoy this one too. So let's go ahead. Crown and root fractures. These are those which extend from the crown up to the root surface. Now the clinical features can be of two types. For uncomplicated crown fractures, there will be involvement of enamel, dentine and the cementum without any pulp exposure. However, in the second type, that means a complicated fracture, there is involvement of enamel, dentine, pulp and the cementum. That means a fracture line extends through the pulp. Now, clinical diagnosis mostly depends upon the mobility of the coronal fragment. When the patient reports to you, you can see the crown portion of a crown is moving. Now, if you percuss it, it is tender on percussion. It gives a positive response. And mobility, mobility is of the fragment only that you can see. Now, sensibility tests are usually positive for the intact tooth portion. And radiographically, we take the periapical occlusal view is recommended. But most of the times, it is seen that the apical extension of the fracture is not visible. The treatment depends largely upon the location of the fracture line. Now consider this first situation where the fracture line extends like this. The second situation where the fracture line extends this way. Now in both these situations we can restore the tooth by bonding either the original crown fragment if we have it with us or by composite builder. And in case it is close to the pulp like this, where, like this in this second situation we can do pulp capping with calcium hydroxide followed by restoration with GIC or composite and we can give lastly we can give a crown now consider another situation now in this situation you can see the fracture line extends subgingivally now in this case what is done the coronal fragment is removed along with a portion of gingiva and that is called gingivectomy like this now if it is sufficient we stop here now in this particular case as given shown in the picture we need to remove a portion of bone as well this like this this is osteotomy and gingivectomy we need to do it like this once we remove this portion what we do is we convert this subgingival fracture line supragingivally that means now we can easily visualize it once we have achieved this what we do is we give our we do rct of this canal give a post spray post and prepare a core followed by a crown restoration coming to a third situation where the fracture line extends deep subgingivally say something like this now in this position it is not possible to do gingivectomy or osteotomy to make the fracture line come to a more favorable location so what do we do we pull out the root surgically or orthodontically extrude it to a more favorable location. Now when we reach this favorable location, we restore the tooth with help of a post. This is a post followed by a core and then a crown. And this is how we give our final restoration. I'll explain it with help of a case. Now in this case, you can see there's a complicated crown root fracture. You can hardly see any crown structure but there is a fracture extending deep subgingivally. So in this case, the root was extracted like this and then it was rotated and it was re-implanted in the socket with 4 mm extrusion. That means 4 mm it was pulled out and then it was re-implanted in this position. Sutures were given. After the new, in the new position, the sutures were given for stabilization. Now you can see how much of the root is outside as compared to the first picture you can see it here and this is the radiograph in which rct is there you can see rct has been done of this root and this is the filling and the tooth has been ex root has been extruded outside the sutures were covered with surgical dressing now these were removed after five days the sutures as well as the dressing the healing has taken place of the soft tissue now the radiograph one month post operatively shows how well the bone has formed around the root and the tooth appears to be stabilized in the new position. Raisin core was made here, built up. On this was placed an all ceramic crown. 
you can see how nicely it is placed this is a two year follow up it shows that the bone is nicely formed around the root the tooth is stable and the restoration is in place now you can compare the pre operative and the post operative picture the first other radiographs this is the pre operative radiograph when the fracture happened and this is the post operative radiograph after the root was extruded two years follow up root bone very well formed tooth stable in the new position this is the clinical pre operative picture and post operative the all ceramic crown working very well for the patient now diagrammatically this is the fracture line going subgingivally the tooth has been extruded post and core restoration followed by crown has been given so this is a nice way to compare the two situations now when we reposition the tooth what happens at the microscopic level now first there is primary reattachment zone what happens in the first 2 to 7 days there occurs reattachment between the periodontal membrane on the root and the gingival connective tissue that means somewhere here you can see the periodontal membrane on the root and the gingiva so they tend to reattach now while this is happening this socket which was empty when the repositioning of the root this gets filled with blood and the blood clots now in the first 1 to 2 weeks this blood clot gets replaced by bony granulation tissue now within 4 to 8 weeks this bony granulation tissue gets replaced by bone and this is how a root gets repositioned firmly in a new place these are the references which were consulted when these videos were made if you want more information do check them out well after this video i hope you are able to manage a case of crown root fracture successfully our next lecture will be on the management of root fractures and if you are enjoying your lectures do subscribe to this channel and also check out videos on dental caries and occlusion thank you